Hello everyone and welcome to this webinar, Managing Positions on the New Active Trader and Brexit Volatility. If anybody has any problems in regard to hearing or my co-host during the webinar, please feel free to send any messages via the chat box. In this webinar, my co-host Neville Hornsey and I will run you through how to successfully monitor and manage trading positions on the new Active Trader platform. We will also be discussing how to manage Brexit volatility when trading the British pound and the most effective trading strategies for the GBP US dollar pair as the United Kingdom speeds towards its March 29th departure date from the European Union. Before we begin, I'd briefly like to introduce myself. Uh, my name is Nathan Batchelor. I have over a decade of experience in the industry. I have a background as a trader uh, specializing in foreign exchange and also working as a, as a technical analyst within the financial market sector. I would quickly like to pass you over to my co-host Neville where he will also briefly introduce himself. Hello, my name is Neville Hornsey. I'm a macro intraday trader, which basically just means I look at the bigger picture across a lot of assets and uh, close out at the end of each day. And I mainly trade uh, foreign exchange. So yeah, thanks Nathan. Right, sure. So now we're just going to run through the uh, topics on the agenda for today. So in this uh, interactive webinar, you will learn how to monitor open market positions on the Active Trader platform. You'll also learn about uh, trade management and also how to manage Brexit volatility and the best ways uh, to trade uh, the British pound against the uh, US dollar pair and also trading potential Brexit outcomes. Uh, so now uh, we're going to run through the uh, disclaimer. If you will just take a, a few moments to briefly read the disclaimer before the webinar begins. Okay, so my uh, co-host Neville is now going to be running you through how to monitor open market positions on the new Active Trader platform. Yeah, cheers. So, all right, so looking at the Active Trader platform here, uh, to find your positions, your orders, and your history, I'm just going to use my pen highlighter. If you uh, look to the bottom of the page, uh, you'll be able to sort of see a little um, arrow and uh, you can click on that all right it's array of drawings all right and here we see that we've got uh, orders in the middle to the left we've got positions and to the right we've got history so if I start on the left hand side uh, you can currently see that we've uh, taken a buy on euro dollar and uh, all of these things are here. So buy and sell under the type. Our position size uh, for each trade is uh, currently 0 0.01 uh, lots and our symbols uh, relate to which asset we'll be trading. And as you can see, uh, each one has an identifying order number, which will be uh, at the brokerage of active trades. Uh, the time that you place the order or the you know, started position and uh, the date and time is there just gonna hide this all right so yeah unfortunately uh, all of our trades are currently um, in the negative <laughs> so uh, it's showing up here on the right hand side the profit that you've currently got open uh, the one thing that uh, new traders might not know of is uh, the swap. And as you can see on the 4th of March, 2019, a buy trade was taken on the euro dollar. And every time uh, you get to a new New York close, the uh, swap is an interest rate differential that's either added or subtracted uh, by the brokerage to onto your account. And you can see if you go long on the euro dollar, uh, you actually get charged for the privilege of holding overnight. And since, well, beginning of the month, it's almost cost us a 91 cents. And that adds on to your profit or takes away from your profit too. So let's get rid of that. Uh, 
no, here you can see the stop loss and the take profit is uh, either placed or not placed, as in the euro dollar hasn't got a stop loss or a take profit, whereas the pound dollar has been uh, trading with a stop loss and a take profit. And now if I go into, I'll just clear this, sorry. Right, so if you write, uh, sorry, these points are, so if you highlight your um, pair that you'd like to adjust, you can either buy again or close position by right clicking. If you double click, you can now uh, look to a modify position. So if you've uh, taken a position on the fly and then you go back uh, moments later, or in this case, a few days later, and you decide that you need to place a stop loss and a take profit, just double click, I'll do it again, just double click on the position or the order that you wanna amend. And here you can see that um, I wanna put a profit in and I'm gonna say, because I am long, I think this is going to 114 and I'm wrong when it gets to 113, so I can just do that. So that's uh, my take profit and stop loss amended, uh, but you have to click obviously modify, and then you are given a little reminder or a little, are you sure? Would you like to modify the position? Yes, I do, modify position. And now you can see that where there was a blank space on the uh, positions uh, in the, uh, stop loss and take profit they've now been filled in so if you've got any questions you're more than happy to ask Nathan no that's great Neville I think you've yeah. you've covered everything really well there all right cool so we'll move on to orders I just uh all right so if you then want to see if you've got any pending orders uh you might notice just there there's like a number one that's highlighting that there's actually one order pending in there. And that's kind of useful as uh, you get to the end of the day. If you have to like close out all your pending orders, maybe it's a Friday, uh, you can easily see that even before you've clicked on the orders that there's something residing in there. So if I click on orders, uh, you'll see that I've uh, placed a sell limit on the pound dollar. And yeah, everything is the same apart from this isn't trading yet. Uh, the exp uh, actually, if you look to the right, there's an expiration. So that's good till cancel, uh, which means until I cancel that pending order, that pending order will sit on the active traders uh, brokerage. Uh, so here, sorry, we could delete this order by double clicking on the expiration. Don't really want to do that. You could right click, duplicate this order. If you felt you could add some more size, uh, delete this order or delete all your orders. You can double click on the actual uh, order itself. And here you can see that in expiration, we've got this GTC, good till cancel. And we could maybe amend that uh, for tonight at nine o'clock in the evening and then modify it from there. And now you can see on the right hand side, GTC has now been uh, replaced with today's date and a time for when I would like the order that's resting to be uh, deleted so I don't have to wake up tomorrow morning after some Brexit volatility and find that I'm in a sell when I should be in a buy. Uh, to hide this, again, you can press the, the little arrow that's uh, oh, hang on, get there, just reside in there. So you can like hide it, bring it back up. 
Right, so history. This just relates to uh, orders that have been activated on the brokerage as a trade's taken place. And then here you can uh, sort of see today, uh, nothing's actually closed. So all the positions that we've got open, if we were to close them right now, so close position, close position, and then go to our history for today. Here you see um, that we've uh, made two losing trades. We've uh, incurred some swap and our profit is uh, yeah red because it's negative. If we go to the um, last three days, nothing else last week. It's been a while since we traded. Oh, there you go. So this month, there's a few more trades as well. Okay, um, that's about all I have, unless you've got some questions on uh, positions, orders, or history, Nathan. Yeah, um, uh, the one thing that I have noticed when using the Active Trader platform is that if you do want to uh, enter into uh, any type of order, uh, you can't do it from just uh, speed trading uh, from the chart. So if you do want to enter an order, uh, you have to go to the top and go to the actual new order itself. Yeah. And once you, so, uh, yeah. Once so you click if, on that, yeah. So if you click on the little tab in the middle here, you get the um, buy and sell, and that is, yeah, place order. So we've just bought a cable, and that can be seen in positions. Yeah. But yes, if you want to do a pending order, you do, like you say, need to, um, yeah, use um, a new order. Yeah. Uh, either by right clicking and, uh, yeah, choosing from the drop down menu, new order, like that, or by going up, I'll just get the highlighter up to the top here and um, clicking on new order. Like so, and then yeah, the market is for taking in a trade like straight away. Pending is, uh, as we discussed in our previous webinar, um, using the sell stops and the sell limit and vice versa for the buys. Uh, yeah, I mean, that's that's kind of your positions, your orders and your history. So uh, we should probably move on to the next slide, which is, Yeah, trade management on the Active Trader platform and managing Brexit volatility. So over to you, Nathan. Yeah, sure. So um, managing Brexit volatility is obviously very topical at the moment uh, because uh, there's a lot going on uh, with the actual Brexit itself. And obviously the uh, British pound is very uh, active at the moment. So I'd just like to start by saying the very obvious, the first and most obvious thing to do when managing Brexit volatility is to keep yourself up to date with what's happening on the Brexit calendar, because obviously we're seeing a lot of dates in uh, Parliament. So uh, traders have to be prepared uh, for these events because they will create volatility in the British pound. So uh, ha having the key dates in front of you is going to serve you well if you are uh, trading the British pound or at the moment any currency pair, because we are starting to see uh, uh, volatility spilling over into uh, other asset classes as people will move into safe havens like the Japanese yen and gold and things like that. So it's good to know the Brexit date. So looking at the key Brexit dates, uh, we've obviously had the uh, meaningful vote, which was voted down in Parliament. And we now come to March the 13th, where we have a decision uh, by Parliament if they want to uh, extend Article 50. And of course, uh, this will then uh, uh, be moved forward uh, to uh, the 14th, where we'll be voting on actually delaying or exiting uh, Article, fi Article 50. And then if that happens, which is expected to happen, uh, the UK uh, requests an extension. Uh, so uh, before, uh, this is something vital for traders to bear in mind. There's two key dates going forward, uh, March 22nd and March 29th. So, on March the 22nd, EU's officials increasingly believe that any deal will only be formally approved by the bloc's leaders 
at the last summit before Brexit on March 22nd. So uh, Mrs May really has up until then uh, to make an agreement with uh, the European Commission President, Mr Jord Claude Juncker, uh, if they do uh, wish uh, to strike a deal before then. So you may see, uh, depending on what's happened with these key votes, you may see March 22nd coming up as a key uh, Brexit date. And then, of course, if no deal is struck, uh, we've got the actual deal itself. But until March uh, 29th, uh, the uh, EU uh, ratification, which is before any Brexit deal uh, can take effect, uh, it must be approved uh, by the European uh, Parliament in a vote. So any legally uh, questionable elements of a, of a withdrawal treaty uh, could also be referred to the European Court of Justice by uh, MEPs. Uh, EU member states must all give uh, the deal final approval in uh, like a, an official ministerial uh, meeting uh, before uh, the uh, March 29th date. And obviously you have the Brexit day itself. So aside from knowing the key Brexit days, you know, the volatility leading up to Brexit is likely to increase, uh, particularly if we haven't got a deal in in mind. Uh, I think traders uh, also uh, should uh, uh, consider uh, reducing uh, leverage uh, when trading uh, British pound pairs and also stop holding overnight position. So there's something for traders to really consider. Um, additionally, uh, I would advise uh, traders uh, to increasingly uh, have a look at the charts and look at the top or the lower end of the recent trading ranges rather than try to enter into the middle of any uh, trade. Uh, I will elaborate on that further uh, now as we talk about the best way to trade uh, the British pound uh, against the US dollar. So. Um, I just ask you, of course, Neville, if you've got any thoughts on that. So now we're just going to be uh, moving to the uh, next part, the uh, best ways to uh, trade the uh, British pound against the US dollar. So in my opinion, uh, trading the uh, extremities uh, of uh, the British pound uh, or sterling, um, it's my opinion, uh, the best ways uh, is to actually know the key trading ranges uh, for the British pound. It's probably the best way uh, to tackle sterling or trade sterling uh, during uh, these key Brexit dates and also leading up to and after Brexit. So uh, so looking on the daily chart, um, it's probably the best way uh, to um, identify these key uh, trading ranges. So uh, first of all, I'd like to uh, start with my observations about uh, what's been happening inside these key trading ranges. So if we first look at the bottom half, we can see that once sterling starts trading uh, below the 126.52 level, we're then in the very lower ends uh, of its uh, recent uh, trading range. And we can see that once sterling's below the 126.52 level, it's then at risk of dropping uh, below uh, the current yearly low around the 124.45. So that's the very lower end of the range. And if we do see uh, sterling start to trading below the 126.52 level, we see that uh, the market is significantly more bearish uh, towards sterling and it then risks uh, breaking down uh, towards a multi-year low. So uh, the very lower end of the, of the range is between 126.42 uh, to 124.45. So just... Uh, slightly less bearish above there is the next trading range to watch out for, which is the 126.53 uh, 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 to 129.52 level. So once we're in that range, we can see that uh, market participants are still bearish uh, towards uh, sterling, but but that's kind of a, uh, a midpoint um, or a pause from the more extreme uh uh, trading ranges. So, for example, if you wanted to trade this in an effective way, you could say that once the one, th if you're looking to trade a breakdown, uh, so uh, once the 130 handle is potentially broken, and you see sterling uh, start to trade uh, below uh, the 
2952 level, you can then uh, start to say, OK, uh, we've broken below uh, key support. Uh, Sterling then has a the potential to weaken uh, back towards uh, that 126.52 level. So the upper end or the more or the range uh, that, uh, that is that is somewhat more mixed. Uh, we've seen Sterling trading in is between the uh, 129.52 to the 130.100 level, which is, is what we saw at the start of the week. Uh, we saw uh, Sterling uh, tumble uh, below the 130 level, and it started to uh, it started to probe around uh, that level there. So uh, keep your eye out for uh, weakness around the uh, one. Uh, 2950 region uh, to the 13100 level so once we start to trade back above the 13100 level we've seen that sterling has started to gravitate back towards the 133 area so the 133 area is uh, uh, the 131 to the 133 area is kind of the more bullish training range so once we get above the 13100 traders have then expect that we might start to test towards that top range and we're now seeing sterling tackling the 13200 level so so we know that the top end is a 133 the very top end of that range now is 13349 so if we were to break above that range and we start to holding above there uh, the next area to watch out for is the 13475 level and that is really uh, a key, the very, the very top end of the bullish range. So the 13300 to 13475 level, uh, watch out for that. A sustained move above the 13475 level, we could potentially even test towards the 13600 level. So that that that's the extreme bullish range. So if you start to see, so in summary, if you start to see a break above the 13475 level, we could possibly see an extension towards that 13600 level. I would also like to add uh, that a bullish inverted uh, head and shoulders pattern is seen on the daily time frame, um, with the possibility um, once we start piercing that 13300 level, um, that is really a, a key area to watch there. So um, it's the neckline. Um, of that inverted head and shoulders pattern that is still valid uh, despite an early dip and you can see you, you've got left and right hand shoulders there on the daily time frame and we can see that once you start holding above that 133 level uh, you must be careful because this uh, pattern ultimately um, holds a projection uh, above 140 and the uh, the very uh, top side of the bullish projection uh, comes to around uh, 1 uh, 41.50 and of course uh, the other uh, uh, the other side um, of the uh, shoulder uh, around the uh, 1 uh, 34.75 level uh, would actually ignite an even larger head and shoulders pattern which could potentially uh, take us towards the 1 43.8 level uh, which is very interesting indeed so we can see if that is uh, ignited then it's got then then uh, uh, this pattern is showing that sterling has got significant uh, upside or appreciation above the 140 handle uh, i would also like to say that um if we do uh, see sterling uh, trading above the 140 yeah that would be the time uh, uh, to look at uh, to look uh, for a potential pullback uh, as uh, markets uh, start to uh, 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 taking uh, price discovery for sterling and what is actually uh, value for sterling at the moment. So now I'd just like to pass it over to Neville uh, to ask um, him uh, if he has any thoughts um, on the best ways yeah. to trade the British pound against the US dollar. Yeah, can you hear me? Yeah, sure, please, yeah. Yeah, cool. Uh, so currently, uh, the way I'm looking at doing it is, well, I'm currently looking at, yeah, similar sort of ranges to yourself. So um, 134 is a big one for me. Uh, I think there's been quite a lot of um, supply in terms of what traders, you know, are using to uh, go back and forth in that range that you've been explaining. And as I look around, um, I personally think uh, anything that's decided is bullish for cable uh, i think the uncertainty of brexit is what has been holding uh, the british pound down so far so i i i am of the view that anything 
that is decided once and for all people will have some certainty and i also believe that yeah it will go a lot higher because you know we've been trading lower and lower for so long now and it's it's, it's all it's all fear and as soon as people can start planning for their future uh we're a strong economy one of the strongest and uh one of the largest and i i, I, just, I do believe that uh, pound will go higher so cool. yeah without without giving a, a trade recommendation um, i just think in the past when there's uncertainty that's when things get depressed but as soon as there's some certainty then you can start to look yeah for uh the real fundamentals of the the country to come into play sure yeah so yeah back to you Rich. yeah sure great okay so um now um i'm going to move on to uh trading potential uh, potential brexit outcomes which is i think is something that uh a lot of people will be uh interested in so i'm going to give my uh base case scenarios and then i'm going to pass it over to neville for his thoughts um so my base case scenario uh, for a limited uh, Brexit extension, I think we'll see sterling trading between the 132 to 13400 level because a limited Brexit um, extension still creates a degree of uncertainty. And I think, uh, as Neville just alluded to, uh, people are looking for certainty uh, to get back to their lives. And obviously, it, it's very hard to uh, price in um what's going on and obviously to concentrate on different elements of the economy with Brexit still hanging over it. So I think if we do see uh, a parliament voting for a limited uh, extension of Brexit, we still have that lingering uncertainty. I would expect a potential, maybe a boost to the top of the range, but I still think you're probably looking at 13200 to 13400 initially. We might see some, some deviations from that range, but I think the market is at the moment is largely pricing in that scenario. So, moving on uh, to the other scenarios, which are which is I think are, are much more interesting. So, a Brexit deal, I think, uh, as I've alluded to, it would trigger the bullish inverted uh, head and shoulders pattern, and we should see uh, sterling uh, trading significantly higher around the one forty region. It, as as Neville uh, said, you know, any type of deal uh, is going to allow people to start planning for their lives and uh, they can start concentrating on the fundamentals of the UK economy. And I think people will stop delaying decisions and obviously uh, businesses can start investing and we'll see a uh, not just uh, international investment, but obviously uh, UK based companies can also start planning for their future. So. In that scenario, I would expect an initial boost above the uh, 140 region, and then I would expect uh, sterling to move in a range between 13800 to 14400 over the second uh, fiscal quarter of 2019. Um, this is, of course, subject to the quality of the deal uh, that the uh, United Kingdom has obviously given, and obviously the level of objection inside uh, the UK ruling party and also the opposition parties because the uh, UK is an increasingly divided country over Brexit and obviously the type of deal we, we might see uh, uh, Brexiteers um, saying that this uh, is not what we voted for and obviously um, in, it, as you're seeing around other countries in Europe the degree of political uncertainty it might create may not be that large but you will see it there. I don't know how market moving it will be, but uh, we have to factor in also the quality of the deal. Um, a Brexit no deal is obviously the most interesting scenario out there. And uh, a Brexit no deal, I believe, would see sterling sold off toward uh, multi-year loads. A, a bearish head and shoulders pattern is very apparent on the weekly time frame chart. Uh, it has been there for some time. Uh, you get... Uh, Thanks for bringing that up, Neville. Yep, you can see the uh, potential uh, bearish head and shoulders pattern, which is obviously uh, going uh, completely against the inverted head and shoulders pattern that we're seeing on the daily time frame. So, yeah, we've got obviously we've got uh, a battle going on there for the bullish and bearish pattern. So you can see uh, just to talk about this pattern, uh, it carries a 1400 to 1500 
downside pip uh, projection, which would take sterling uh, towards a levels not seen in quite some time. Uh, and obviously we will see it tackling the 105 handle. Um, the, uh, the neckline of the pattern or the very end at uh, the very low uh, from the uh, 20 uh, from the October 2000 I believe uh, or around there uh, when we saw that large drop then we saw another drop so you you're seeing the neckline around there and uh, that is currently found around the one 1985 level or to be um, a little bit less picky we can say around the 120 handle so yep yeah, below the 120 handle and uh, you, you're going to uh, see sterling coming in under some significant pressure the technical selling pressure if that is broken it will be dramatic even if it doesn't hold uh, you you'll definitely see uh, some large orders triggered some stop losses triggered and you'll see it and, and you'll see a lot a lot of action if that key level is is taken out there will be a sizable knee-jerk reaction um i i can pretty much guarantee that so yeah um, those are my uh a potential outcomes there uh, for uh, the scenarios uh, that I'm looking for. And I'd just like to pass it over to you, Neville, for your thoughts as well. Yeah, I mean, the uh, scenarios that are listed, you know, on the key dates are yeah. obvious ones and people can sort of plan towards them. So you can sort of see um, yeah, in the next few days up until like the 22nd and then the 29th, the brokerages are going to be sort of putting out warning saying um there's going to be like a thin market there's going to be lots of volatility yeah, that's uh, a good you know, point. Be, yeah make sure your sizes are small enough but the one thing which hasn't been mentioned in mainstream media, media that i see is the talk of the erg the european research group doing a deal with theresa may because they're kind of the conservative thorn in her side so, you know, yeah. making sure she pushes for you know a brexit of sort they i've heard rumors well noise that um if they were to do a deal with theresa may to allow her to get some sort of deal through you know with her name attached to it that they would do a deal that she, they would ask her to then step down like in the summer so um that that might come as a bit of a shock to some yeah. traders yeah. so there's all sorts of like duplicity and like shenanigans going on so even though we've got some key dates you know just trading cable throughout this period until we've got absolute certainty you know there's going to be some uh you know like events which people haven't really really sort of figured out yet especially uh, retail traders so um yeah you might find yourself seeing like a big move without an actual key piece of a uh, date you know being listed yeah sure, by, by sure, the calendar. sure. So that, that's kind of tricky and the other thing i was going to say was on a on a weekly uh we took out the um the high of uh, september just a couple of weeks ago and if you go down to like a lower time frame um it'd be good if we were to make um if i just get my pointer so if if this if this area was a low and this was a high and this was a lower low, what we're kind of looking for is um, now, an, a, you know, a new higher high. And sure. yeah, that would be, that'd be a good sign that we're going to go higher a bit quicker. But, but until then, you know, we're just going to be trading in that range that you described. So we shall have to wait and see. Great. Yeah, that's brilliant. All right, well, I'd like to thank everybody uh, for attending this webinar and uh, please uh, join uh, myself and Neville for uh, our next webinar uh, and it will be on, uh, discussing technical indicators on the Active Trader platform. We'll also be discussing the euro, uh, uh, the actual webinar's name itself. Uh, uh, watch out for it. It's called Technical Indicators and the Euro. Thank you very much.